everybody my name's Liz I'm the baker that sews welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're a subscriber as always it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey so welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be a Sunday sewing catch-up and I've got lots of different things um, that I wanted to talk to you about today um, I actually debated about whether to film a video today because I haven't really done a huge amount of sewing this week um, the first sort of four or five minutes of this video will probably just be life updates and things that have been going on this week. So if you're not interested in hearing all of that, skip forward probably about four minutes. Um, but yeah, normally I do try and get a little bit of sewing in. Um, I try and do that on a Saturday or sometimes I do it on a Friday evening. If I know I've got a busy weekend, then sometimes I'll carve out a bit of time during the week. Um, we've had quite a lot going on kind of family wise this week. Um, I did update on my um, Instagram stories to say that we got some really good news on Thursday, Friday. So we were celebrating on Friday. Um, as a lot of you know, um, I have a child who has autism and they moved to a specialist provision in the summer term um, last academic year. So 2023, we were made to believe that moving to that specialist provision would be permanent. But when the new academic year started, September 2023, we were told that we'd have to have six week reviews and there was the possibility that they would be sent back to mainstream, which was quite stressful for us as a family. So we have had a big battle on our hands for this last term. It's been quite stressful. We've had to speak to lots of different professionals and back and forward and really fight our corner. Um, but we got some really good news on Thursday morning. Um, I got an email to say that the panel that make all these decisions had agreed that um, Reeves could stay at the specialist provision until the end of GCSE. So that means we've got a year roughly of um, not having to worry about provisions and then probably next academic year when Ruby's in year 11 we'll have to start thinking about college so we've got a little bit of respite where we can kind of breathe um really good news it means that they can be happy and settled at their school so massively relieved um, and that's taken up a lot of time this week chasing professionals as has chasing medical professionals um because of the upcoming surgery so that's actually taken up a lot of time this week as well um, and then I got some news in the middle of the week that my dad was poorly. So my family live about 200 miles away from me. So not easy to pop round and, and see. Um, we have to kind of schedule in that time in holidays and things. And I got a call to say that my dad was poorly. He'd been admitted to hospital. So it's been quite an up and down week and actually quite worrying. He's now home and they've run lots of tests and things. So we're just waiting to hear sort of the results of the tests. But he's resting at home, being looked after by my mum, who's a nurse, and my sister's a nurse. So he's being cared for by the best people. Um, but that has meant, actually, that I haven't been able to do a huge amount of sewing. What I have done, though, is crochet, because I've found that that has been kind of keeping my mind busy and occupied. I haven't really had the headspace this week for sewing. Um, so I've only got one thing to share with you. So before I share that, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. Um, I am wearing a ready to wear jumper. I think this is from Next, but I got it from Vinted um, in this really gorgeous, like hot pink. Well, I, I describe it as hot pink, but it's not like super bright pink, actually, um, colorway. This necklace my husband bought me from, I think it's called Twigged. Um, I'll see if I can link them down below if they still sell jewellery, but that's what the company are called. Um, this necklace is a couple of years old. He got it me for my birthday a few years ago because uh, he knows that I love like rainbow colours and bright colours and things. Um, and I feel like it goes really nicely with this jumper. So I'm wearing that. And then I have got on um, one of my favourite skirts that I've ever made. I'll stand up so you can see and I'll see if I've got photos of this. I'll try and get pictures of the outfit and maybe a video so you can see how much it twirls. But this is just a really straightforward flat fronted skirt. This fabric, I think I just got from a local fabric shop. It's like a crim crinkly kind of cotton, but it's actually got a bit of bounce to it as well. It's got a really lovely weight. And then I've just put loads of rickrack trim all down the front and then all the way around the back as well. All different lengths, all different colours. I'll stand on the chair so you can see, but the rickrack just moves so nicely. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then just a white fabric to really let the rickrack colours pop. Um, love this skirt. Absolutely love wearing it. Um, I wore it with my rainbow bomber jacket and the amount of people that stopped me to say that they loved my um, coat and my outfit just really made me smile when I wore this out earlier. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm wearing. I'll put pictures in of anything I talk about, line drawings and things, if I don't have them to hand. And I'll link everything I talk about down below as well. 
Um, thank you so much for all of your suggestions with the waistcoat idea that I shared last weekend. Um, I'd say it was sort of a 50-50 split actually as to whether I should sew it as two separate waistcoats or whether I should keep the fabrics together. Um, I'm still undecided. I haven't touched that project since I got it cut out um, for reasons that I've already explained at the start of this video. Um, but yeah, once I do tackle that, I think I will then obviously decide what I'm going to do. I think I'm erring more towards sewing them as two separate waistcoats because I've got two different fluffy waistcoats and quite a few people made a very good point about the fabrics being quite bulky to sew together. Um, so I am erring more on the side of sewing them as separate waistcoats, but we'll see when I actually sit down to get those sewn up. Sadly, I haven't had the time or the headspace either to make a start on Lola's fluffy blazer and she keeps on asking me. Um, so I'm hoping next weekend, if not the following weekend when it's half term, um, I might get a bit of chance to sit down and sew that. I feel like that's a project that I just need to almost have a whole day and evening to immerse myself in. Because um, once I start sewing that up, I think the fluff's just going to go everywhere. So I think I want that to be a project that I can start and finish in the same day. So I'm just going to get up really early, make a start and sew into the evening until I get it finished. So her blazer may actually become a February half term project. So I know that I've got that time to dedicate to getting it made. So what have I been sewing this week? I have been inspired by everybody sharing these gorgeous Sherpa LB pullovers on Instagram. And this was a project that was included in one of the Fabric Godmother Dream Wardrobes. I think it was the one in December. And I've seen so many cosy looking people wearing these LB pullovers in a white kind of, well, it's not white really, actually. It's a cream colored Sherpa fabric. And it's this beautiful fabric. So I ordered this fabric from Fabric Godmother. When I ordered it, they did still have some in stock. So I link it down below. It is so snuggly and soft. It's absolutely incredible. Um, this has been like my quick, easy breezy project this week. Don't really have to think about it when I'm sewing. It's actually not finished. I need to hem it and I need to hem the sleeves as well. But most of it is put together and I've already tried it on and it feels absolutely incredible to wear. It's so cosy. Um, so yeah, it's a really simple pattern. It's got that funnel neck collar, drop shoulder details. I did extend the sleeve by about two inches because I found on my first LB pullover, the sleeves were actually too short on me. And I've also extended the bodice. I think I extended the bodice by about two and a half inches because uh, I want to be able to tuck it in and things. You can see the hem's a bit wibbly wobbly at the moment um, because I've just overlocked it and then I just need to hem it as well. So almost finished. Um, I know it's going to be really cosy to wear um, and I think it's a really gorgeous, um, simple pattern. Um, but that fabric is just incredible and it feels so lovely and snuggly and warm as um, well. So that's the only sewing thing that I've almost got finished this week. And then I also mentioned that I have been crocheting. So I've been in the middle of crocheting two things this week. Um, one of them is an oversized jumper and then the other one is a beret pattern. So I'll talk about the jumper first. So I bought some of this amazing wool from Wool Warehouse. It's a Yarnsmith Play Chunky. I can't remember what this one was called, um, but I'll link it down below. I thought it would have the name on it, but it doesn't. It's a beautiful kind of rainbow ombre effect, um, I was going to say fabric, wool. And it has created the most incredible, if I show you, in my opinion, the most incredible front of a jumper. So I'm just gonna hold it up. I've got lots of stitch markers and things in it at the moment, but that is gonna be the front of my jumper. You can see I've got the ribbing at the bottom. I actually quite enjoy crocheting ribbing. Um, I think you get a really gorgeous texture from it. Um, is that the front? No, that's the front. Sorry, I held it up with the, the back to you. But that's what the front looks like. And then I've just got stitch markers for where the sleeves are gonna go. Um, and then where you um, attach the shoulders. So it's gonna be like that on me and then I'm going to put some ribbing along the neckline as well and then I will stitch up the sides and then insert the sleeves and you crochet the sleeves in the round so I'm really looking forward to getting that finished I've only done the front so far and then I need to do a back panel then connect it do the sleeves and then finish it with the the neckband and then the ribbing on the cuffs as well on the sleeves rather but I've really enjoyed um crocheting that up it's been a really enjoyable process because um it's quite repetitive um you've got lots and lots of different rows and it uses a mixture of the treble stitch and the half treble so I've had to really focus on which stitch I'm using at which time um lots and lots of counting which is quite relaxing and quite therapeutic 
um, and quite a repetitive motion as well. So I have started the back panel and um, that's going to take me a while but I have really enjoyed that and the pattern that I'm using is this one, it's called the Bailey Pullover. Um, it's meant to be really oversized. The jumper that I am crocheting for myself is not quite as oversized as that is, but it is quite a loose, boxy fit. Um, it's written by Janet Brooks and it's bddpatterns.com. Described as a really easy pattern. You can see I've scribbled all over my pattern. Um, but yeah, I've been really enjoying just crocheting that up. And I've ordered some really, really chunky because I think you're meant to use like super, super chunky wool. Um, they recommend Lion Brand Respun Thick and Quick. Um, and I haven't used that. I've used a wool, like I said, by Yarnsmith, which is called Play Chunky. But I think you're meant to use like a really, really chunky um, yarn. Um, so I have just been really mindful of that and sized up using that wool. But like I said, really easy pattern. I still consider myself very much a beginner with crochet. Um, but a really easy pattern um, to sit down and crochet. The pattern's really easy to follow as well. So I've been really enjoying that. And then I've also, I'm just using a plain wool, which is unlike me, but I'm also in the process of crocheting a beret. So at the moment it's just a circle and then I am starting to do um, the sort of the rim of the beret. Um, but that's what it's going to look like when I wear it in that gorgeous like forest green. That's been a really enjoyable pattern to crochet up as well. Quite repetitive. I can't remember the name of the pattern or who it was by, but I'll put an image in now so you can see. Um, but I've very much been enjoying crochet because I haven't really had the kind of headspace to follow pattern instructions and sew up anything too complicated. Um, I'm actually thinking of filming a video if anyone would be interested in my journey of learning to crochet and the things that have, I have found have helped me learn to crochet along the way. Because I did try to learn to crochet about a year, a year and a half ago, and I really couldn't get my head around it. But something has just clicked in place and I found lots of different places have been really helpful and really useful in helping me kind of grasp the concept of crochet. Um, so if you think that would be something that you would be interested in or you would find that useful, let me know in the comments below and I will film that. I don't claim to be a crochet expert, like I said, I feel like I'm very much at the beginning, um, but I thought it might be helpful to put all of the tips and tricks that I have found really useful in one video for anyone else that is right at the beginning of learning to crochet. So that's everything that I have been sewing and making this week. Um, I'm hoping I'll have a little bit of time next week to do some more sewing. Um, and I've definitely got lots and lots of plans of things that I want to sew up. Um, and I'll finish with my plans at the end of this video. But whilst I haven't been able to sew, I have been fabric buying. And there's a bit of a theme with my fabric this week. So this is the stack of fabric that I've been buying. And you can see that there's definitely a theme, a theme of snuggly fabric, but also a theme of green fabric. So I'll start with the top fabric. It's this absolutely beautiful, I think it was described as a wool jersey fabric from Fabric Godmother. As soon as Josie shared this on the stories, oh, what do they call it? It's called Willow Knitted Wool Jersey in a Fern and Lime colourway. Um, it was £12 a metre, I think, and I got a metre and a half. I absolutely fell in love with that colour. I think it's absolutely gorgeous, that kind of marbly effect. It looks like fields. Um, I just think it's absolutely stunning. Um, it has got stretch because it's a jersey wool. If I hold it up, it's actually quite lightweight. Um, if I hold it up, it's quite a bouncy fabric as well, actually. It has got really good stretch and really good recovery. Um, I'm going to turn it into some kind of jumper. I'm not quite sure what pattern I'm going to use for it yet. Um, but I bought a metre and a half of it and it is quite a wide fabric. I may just use the LB pullover because I really like that funnel neck. Um, or I might use the South Bank. I might have enough actually to sew up a South Bank um, sweater dress by Nina Lee Patterns. Um, I've got a metre and a half and it is quite wide. That might look really pretty as a South Bank sweater dress. There's an idea actually. Um, but it's such a beautiful fabric. This sold out really quickly, so I'm not sure if Fabric Godmother have got any of this left and they did have it in different colourways. If they have, I'll link it down below. Um, but it's such a beautiful fabric and I think it's going to feel really lovely and snuggly and warm to wear as well. I am more sort of, um, I am more leaning towards a dress actually. South Bank sweater dress. I think I should have enough of that fabric to make the sweater dress rather than the sweater. 
Then sticking with the cosy theme, I couldn't resist this. Um, I think this was described as a Sherpa fabric from Semi Sunshine in this beautiful kind of, um, it's not really a chocolate brown. I don't know what colour you would describe that as. It's kind of deeper than a beige uh, leopard print. And I think I've got two metres of this fabric and I'm going to turn it into a coatigan or some kind of like cardigan jackety like type um, extra layering piece. I'm not quite sure what pattern I'm going to go for yet but I want this to be something that I can wrap myself in like I've got a blanket on. I don't want it to be a jumper um, because I want to be able to wear it when I go to work. And what I find sometimes, and I found that when I've worn this to work, and I'm finding it at the moment where we've kind of moved out of the cold snap that we had and we're into kind of, sometimes it's about 12, 13 degrees outside. And I'm finding that by the afternoon when the sun is shining, I'm actually a little bit too hot in my jumpers so I want this to be like an extra layering piece so say I've got a jumper and some trousers or I've got a jumper dress on or I've got I don't know a shirt and a skirt or something I want this to be like an extra layer um, so I don't want it to be a jumper I want it to be something that's open uh, something with pockets because uh, I find that really practical when I'm at work I do need deep pockets um, but I'm not quite sure what pattern I'm going to go for yet so Me Sunshine had this fabric in lots of different colourways as well. So if they haven't got this fabric left, I'll link the other colourways down below. Um, but that is such a beautiful fabric. Absolutely love it. And again, that feels really lovely and snuggly and warm. And then sticking with the cosy fabric, this fabric is a plain fabric and I've been wanting some of this fabric for ages. And then I saw that Pound Fabrics had this in this beautiful green colourway. They've still got this fabric in stock. I'll link it down below. I bought three metres of this fabric. It's a sweatshirting fabric and it's fleece backed. So it's got that really lovely snuggly texture on one side. Absolutely gorgeous. And I'm going to turn this into a jumper and some joggers. So I want like... Almost like loungewear, but smart enough to be able to wear out of the house. I want quite loose fitting joggers. I don't want joggers that have got a cuff band on the hem. Um, and I don't want joggers that are um, quite slim fitting. I want quite wide legged um, joggers. So if anyone's got any pattern suggestions, please let me know. I'll probably use the LB pullover or the South Bank sweater for the jumper because I know that they're patterns that I really like the feel of and the fit. Um, but the joggers, I'm not sure what pattern I'm going to go for. I would like pockets and I would like them to be wide legged with no cuff band on the bottom. I don't want them to be slim fitting at all. Um, I've got plenty of this fabric to play around with. So I know that I'm going to have a really cozy um, sort of loungewear joggers jumper set um, when I do get the chance to sew this up. Um, absolutely love that colour um, so I'm really excited about getting that one sewn up I think I'm going to really enjoy wearing those two together but also wearing the joggers with different jumpers and wearing the jumper with different bo bottoms as well so that was all the fabric that I've been buying and then I've also been swayed by Sandeep who runs System and Tarka she's making the most incredible dress at the moment out of tall fabric it is so beautiful if you head to system and taka um i'll link her instagram page down below but she's currently working on the most beautiful dress um and i've been following her progress and she shared information saying that she was inspired by a new pattern that has been released so i've got the information about the pattern and i have gone and bought the pattern because i absolutely love it i think it's absolutely beautiful so the pattern is by sewing and the city which is a new pattern company to me and the dress pattern is called the minetta dress and top pattern minetta is spelled m-i-n-e-t-t-a um it is absolutely stunning it comes in sizes 2 to 20 and they describe it as a loose fitting pullover dress and top so you can sew it as a top but you can also sew it as a dress it's got this really gorgeous bustier detailing across the front, um, across the front yoke, um, mid-length sleeves gathered into a cuff. And then there's the option for button down back or you could do a ribbon tie back. That is the detail for me that just is absolutely beautiful. The front detail is stunning as well and it looks so different depending on the fabric that you choose to use. Um, the side seam pockets and a ruffled bottom hem and if you followed me for a while you'll know that I absolutely love a ruffle. This dress pattern, I think the top's really cute as well but I'm definitely going to sew up the dress pattern first. 
In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium woven fabrics with body, like a denim, a brocard, cotton poplin and a corduroy fabric. I've actually got some brocard fabric that I got from Semi Sunshine last year that I'm yet to sew up and I think that would look stunning in this pattern. Um, it was like a florally type fabric, um, but I think that will look absolutely stunning. I've got quite a few cotton poplins, which I think would work really nicely for this dress as well. And I was even thinking the... Um, the needle cord fabric that came in the So Hilly Jane box that I was asking for thoughts on what to use that fabric for. I thought that might work really nicely for this pattern too. Um, the pattern is absolutely gorgeous. Um, as soon as I saw it, I fell in love with it and I bought it and I've sent it off for copy shop printing. So I'm very excited about giving that a try. I'll probably try that pattern out during half term when I've got a little bit of time for sewing. Um, the next thing I just wanted to mention was um, So Yellow for Endo is coming back. So it's run by the lovely Jess who is So What If I Sew. I'm sure you follow her on Instagram already but if you don't I'll link her Instagram page down below she's just started sharing some snippets of sponsors um, for the So Yellow for Endo which is coming back for 2024 if you haven't heard of it before it's a great challenge that Jess runs throughout the month of March raising awareness for endometriosis and raising money for the charity as well so she usually has a just giving page um, and if you want to take part in the challenge on Instagram um, there'll be more information that comes about um, but we are encouraged to sew something yellow um, use the hashtag and tag Jess and then also donate to her Just Giving page. So she's raised a huge amount of money for charity um, since she started running this challenge. It's an absolutely incredible um, kind of cause, um, just highlighting the issues around getting diagnosed for endometriosis, what your symptoms are, what your journey might look like and just making people more aware of it as well. I just wanted to make you aware of it because if like me, I think a lot of us are going through our fabric stashes at the moment and kind of using the beginning of the year to get organised, I'm already starting to think about what fabrics can I use to sew up something yellow to take part in that challenge in March. So I'll link Jess down below so you can go and find out a bit more information about that. So I've got a small sewing channel for you and it's the lovely Erin and her page is, or her channel should I say, is called Erin Sews. She's got a mixture of videos over on her channel, including a video about her sewing goals for 2024. Um, she takes part in Friday's sews she's got some fabric um videos as well so she's got loads of different videos over on her channel so if you're looking for somebody else that vlogs about sewing whilst you're enjoying some sewing time or you just want some inspiration go and give erin sews a follow over on her youtube channel um she's got lots and lots of videos for you to watch and she's really enjoyable to watch too so I always like to finish with some of my sewing plans. I talked about a lot of sewing plans last weekend and obviously didn't get around to sewing any of them up because I've had a bit of a tricky week this week. Um, but I definitely want to get my loungewear slash joggers jumper set sewn up in this beautiful green fabric. So if anyone's got any suggestions of a pattern that's a wide leg kind of relaxed fit joggers pattern, please let me know. Um, Lola is going to keep on asking me about sewing up her blazer. Um, so I have written that down as something that I might get a chance to sew up next weekend, but we'll see. Um, I have got plans to turn this into something, so I'm hoping to get that sewn up soon and maybe just cut out. Um, and then I've got that green rib knit fabric that I got from Newcraft House a couple of weeks ago and I shared last weekend in that gorgeous green fabric and I would really love to get a Nico dress cut out and sewn up in that fabric too as well as all of the other things that I would like to get sewn up I'm going to continue crocheting my beret and also crocheting that jumper and I'm hoping I'll have a bit more progress to share with you next weekend as well so that was everything that I wanted to share with you today just to say that I didn't release a Wednesday video last week I just haven't had the chance to film other videos outside of my Sunday sewing catch up um, I was hoping to get some more videos filmed this weekend, but for all the reasons I said at the beginning of the video, I just haven't had the time. So there won't be a Wednesday video next week either, but next weekend I'm hoping to carve out a bit of time to film a couple of videos. I have got loads of plans of videos that I want to film. I would like to share my favourite five things that I sewed last year, five things that I haven't worn as much as I hoped I would from last year. Um, if you're interested, I will film the crochet video talking about how I taught myself to crochet and what I found really useful. Um, I was going to talk about some snuggly, cosy patterns that I'm really inspired to sew up at the moment as well. Plus lots and lots of other things. If you've got any videos that you would really love me to film, please let me know in the comments below as well. Uh, but thank you as always for all of your support, all of your lovely comments and likes and shares. I really do appreciate it. 
If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would really love it if you could hit that subscribe button because you get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thank you as always for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.